I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, pretty sheltered life. I had some things happen in my personal life, but I didn't want to focus on me. And I, I wanted to show people how a young woman, at the time I was in my 20s, who um, uh, could move 3,000 miles away, single parent, three babies, and come to California in search of a dream. and. Um, got totally the opposite. <laughs> and came time to put Raymond in school. My son Raymond is um, developmentally disabled. And I had did my due diligence. And so we go into the meeting and they decide what um, educational plan is best for Ray with his condition. And um, we had it all laid out. And then I go home and I'm excited because now, you know, things are on track and moving forward and I'm watching, I'm cooking. I'm cooking dinner. My kids are sitting down watching TV and uh, they have a news break. And the news break was that uh, a child from Boston, well, they said from Boston, Massachusetts, four-year-old has just been enrolled in, in um, at Ethel Phillips Elementary School and he has a disease and the parents don't want him in the school, the teachers. Well, while I'm listening to this, I'm cooking and listening to this, but I'm not thinking it's me. I'm thinking it's some other people. You know, I'm like, wow, those poor people. And I'm thinking it's in my head. And then I don't know what happened, but something clicked. And I turned around and I looked at the kids and I looked at the TV and I saw the mob and on the TV, on the news. And so I just kind of walk over and I sit on the floor with the kids and I start hugging them. And my daughter looks up at me and she says, Mommy, you're crying. And I was, I just looked down at her because at that moment, I knew it was us that we were talking about. So we set a meeting the next day to go to the school and um, it was pandemonium when I got there. And Raymond has an illness called cytomegalovirus, which um, when contracted um, can cause birth defects. With AIDS and, and HIV, cytomegalovirus and herpes all together, they just lumped everything together. And it was, and so it caused a lot of fear. It, it was just crazy. The, you know, the, they, the attrition rate for the school, they took the kids out to school. Uh, the parents started protesting. We were uh, pretty much isolated because I couldn't bring him back until this was resolved. We were isolated, we really were. We, um, they sent in a tutor for a little while. And so for a year and a half, almost 18 months, we fought. I fought with the school district and I got an attorney for, with the disabled to allow Ray to go to school. And then it stayed in the news constantly for that 18 months. And I, that wasn't something I was used to, you know, your life being put out there like that. And then in my own personal life, the friends and people that I had met when I first moved and the, the children that they were playing with, well, now they all withdrew, you know. And it was so hard to explain that everything was okay when you yourself wasn't sure if everything really was okay or not. And so that was the catalyst that started me on the journey that, I'm, that brings me right here today. I want, I want the readers to take away that sense of, of um, that everything's gonna be all right. You know, you just have to, you just gotta fight through your situation. You can't ever give up. You can't ever let the naysayers, as I like to call them, dictate your life for you. 